so much for being here. Um, I don't know. I want to thank you for accepting my invitation. Um, I think it's a it's a real honor to to have you here and record this this conversation because um, I don't know. You are one of the the men that um, inspired me a lot, and uh -huh. you have a real contribution in my uh, awakening. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and uh, thank you, thank you so much, so much. Um, okay. But um, um, tell us about love. Talk about love? About, okay. About love, yes. Yeah. About tradition and love. Yeah, when, when we talk about love, um, really, where do we start? Because the question is, what is not love? You know, when we think about love, we think about relationships, we think about sex, um, we think about friendship, but love is all-encompassing. There's nothing outside of love. You know, I used to wonder, you know, what makes the earth rotate around the sun and its perfection. That's, that's, that's love, really. And this, how the cells of our body um, change all the time. Uh, to create balance, um, the uh, you you know the Earth is hurtling through space at 20 miles per second, and yet we walk upright and feel as if you know we are solid on solid ground, perfectly balanced because of uh, um, uh, the gravity, you see. But what creates gravity? The perfection of it, the beauty of it, you know. So we can say, yes, love is everything. There is nothing but love. And what, when we talk about God, we are really talking about love itself. Because God is not somebody outside of us, something outside of us. It is our very being itself. It is who we are, you know. Even the Bible said that we are made in the image of God. And that, that image which is us really is love itself so so there's nothing outside of love when we recognize it then we find peace we find harmony we find beauty we find glory and we find wow i'm glad to be alive <laughs> <laughs> okay um i um, i'm thinking of my community on get inspired because um, um, I find I um, I think I find the the essence of life. I'm I'm uh, in every moment I'm uh, I'm I'm living a fulfilling life. I'm happy. Um, I'm uh, aware, um, and I want to to inspire other people to discover this pure love inside of them. Beautiful. And. Um, um, I, 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 um, I'm sure that we can find this that, um, I don't know, is, uh, is all there is, in, in my opinion. But I have, uh, I have a lot of people uh, around me that are negative, that um, uh, suffer a lot. Um, and um, I, I want to, to inspire them to, um, to believe. To believe yes, that yes. life yeah. is beauty, life is love. Yeah. When you see when you see people like who are very negative and they don't believe as you do. In other words, you know they are not feeling good. Um, mm -hmm. It is because they are seeking love instead of being love. You know, mm -hmm. love is all there is, and if we say that all there is, then even fear is a frustration of love. So we will find that when people are unhappy, lonely, desolate, um, you know, pessimistic or whatever negative term you can call them, um, it is all, again, it's a quest for love. It's, it's a need for love because when you listen to people and when you really pay attention and, and love them and really care, they begin to open up and that very opening up brings out the best in them so in other words the love is in them but it's covered up by so much need maybe they never had it as a child maybe uh, you know they're they're feeling separate and and separate so so when we understand people we will see that 
when we listen to them between the words, all they really want is that love, that very love that they are. But because they don't know that they are, well, <laughs> it manifests itself in a negative way. And, and how we can give them that love? By being who we are. Um, you don't g really give love, you are love. And when you discover it, and that's what awakening is, spiritual awakening, really. When you, when you fully awaken, then by being that love, people can feel it. Mm -hmm. They can feel it by being with you. They can feel it because it's genuine, it's, it's real. You know, yeah. so it comes from heart to heart, sharing. Okay, but and, um, uh, a very, very important question. Who we are <laughs> in our essence? Yeah, we are. yeah. To, to discuss that, um, I have to use words, but uh, let me put it this way, who we are. You know, when mm -hmm. you were a baby, you were a lump of flesh, and you were just born, but it was you. And then you became a child, two or three years old, you were totally different, you started to walk, uh, you were given a name, and, but it was still, still you, even though you were totally different. Then you became a teenager, and as a teenager you had different feelings, different beliefs, different concepts. You looked at life totally different, your body was different, your personality was different, everything was different. It was still you. Then you became a woman, you see? And it's still you, even totally different. So the point is this, who is this you? Who are you really? And then, when a person has been, has been reading a lot of spiritual material, they say, well, I am spirit, I am this. But you see, there's the, there's the, the point here, and I'm, I'm getting to your question. See, the moment you say, I am spirit, or I am a part of God, or I am this, or I am that, you define it. And the moment you define it, the moment you put a label to it, your mind has conjured up, oh, I know the truth now. And it closes off to greater expansion. So in truth, we really cannot know who we are because our individual mind is too limited to conceive of something so great. So, for example, if you ask me, Bert, do you know who you are? Well. In truth and reality, I do not, because Bert, the real, who I really am, is so vast, is so great, is so you know unlimited in its potential, that if I were to say, well, Bert is this, this, and that, I put a limit to it. That, that's how grand you know you are itself. So, when you know who you really are you'll find that you look out and you are everything that you see and experience because that is the I am of you. You know, there are, there are seven billion humans on this earth, but there is only one being. And that one being is called I am. Now, every I am on this earth is like a wave of the ocean. There could be billions of waves on the ocean, all look separate, different, you know, and unique from each other, but they're all the same water. So it's the same with us. We are all the same life. And that's what love is, you know. Uh, I'm talking to you, you're talking to me now, and there is love between us. We're connecting, and we're connecting beyond time and space, because you are in Romania, I am in Vancouver. Your time is different, my time is different, but beyond that, the now, this connection is now. And this now is eternal. This now has no exit. This now never ends. And then we will begin to find out, wow, I am not part of now, I am now itself. Do you understand? I am this now itself. Therefore, I was never born and I will never die. And when I began to realize how grand I really am, which is, which is you, which is everyone I meet, then we see how we're all part of each other, and there is that, that com connection, because we connect through that love, you see? So the more you love, the more you love, and the more you love, because you love, the more you love, <laughs> you see? So it becomes, um, it becomes a very alive thing. Of you course. Know.
you become alive, you become free, because everything, you see, right now, you're doing this interview, you love it, I can, I can see it in you that you love it, you're doing mm. something you love, when you do something you love, you become in full of expression of it, because it is love, love is always <laughs> at its best, you see, so, okay. <laughs> that's who you are, but you cannot, yeah. yeah, you cannot really name it, because then you limit it, so you can say that I am far more than I can say. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I'm asking you that because um, I don't know. In my uh, in my community, there are a lot of people that um, are identifying a lot with their um, roles in the society. And um, I don't know. I have a lot of uh, a lot of friends that are that are saying uh, I'm um, I don't know. I'm Remus. I'm a student. I'm a son. I'm a father. I'm and um, uh, yeah. I, I I want to see. I want to inspire them to to look inside of them. Um, in my in my opinion, the happiness uh, we are the, the happiness itself. That's right. And we, we are the love itself, um, and uh, these uh, identifications with uh, the roles that we ha that we ha are having in the society. Um, um, I don't know. I, I think there are um, such limiting beliefs here. Yes, a lot of limiting beliefs, and uh, I, I know I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it <laughs> every single moment that. Uh, of my life that I'm, I'm more than this. I'm, I'm That's right. everything that... Because you're, you are a human being, you see. The being is unlimited. The being has no beginning or end. But the human has a beginning okay. and has an end. But okay. you, you, are, you are a human being. See, the, the human part is always seeking, always needing, wanting, striving. So it okay. plays a role. It wants to be better. It wants to improve. But it doesn't realize it is the being that is prodding it. We're always seeking ourselves. The human is seeking the being. But what happens initially in the beginning, because we're not aware who we are, we start seeking things from the world, thinking that the more money we have, and there's nothing wrong with money, money is beautiful, but mm -hmm. the more money we have, we think the better we are, or if we drive a big car or drive, uh, have a big, big home, we're, I'm going to be better. But when we do have them, we still feel empty inside. Because what we really want more than anything else is the, the things that, they, that we think these things can give us. For example, why do we want a home? Because when we have a home, we feel okay. secure, we feel at home, right? But of course. it's always us we are seeking. We are seeking the very home that we are inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. The, um, yeah, the roles are, you know, they, they are part of us, but they are not who we are. But um, uh, I don't know, I, I love Tanya a lot. <laughs> I, I love myself a lot. <laughs> but uh, I'm not identifying with Tanya. Very good. I, <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I have a lot of uh, of experience in my uh, uh, in my life that um, um, first of all they um, are scared me a lot. Uh -huh. But uh, after after all, I uh, I've seen the beauty of all of this. I um, I start to um, love myself a lot and. Um, being more here right now, mm -hmm. and I think this uh, this is eternal, as you said. That's um, right. You never die, right? Hmm. Yeah, the body <laughs> does, but you are far more than a body. Yes, because you know, yes. some people say, "But then, you know, my senses are gone, and I'm not able to see or hear or feel anymore." <laughs> not not true at all. As a matter of fact, you know, when people close their eyes at night, they can dream very vivid dreams. The pictures can be in color and sound, and yet their eyes are closed. You see? <laughs> so, in other words, you know, our senses, yes, you know, like for example, uh, we see with our physical eyes, but it is our consciousness 
mm-hmm. that really sees and experiences, you see. So, so our, our physical eyes help us to see physical things, but the very seeing, it comes from, from our deep you know, consciousness itself. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that we can actually go and travel in our, um, in our body, you know, okay. like out-of-body experience, in other words, I'm saying, you know. We can have an out-of-body experience and we can experience life just as real as if in the body. I know because I've had that experience. Okay. And Bert, how we can start to, I don't know, to, to live more in the present of now, in the moment of now? Yeah, how by, by realizing, <laughs> yeah, the thing is to know that even though you have a past and you have many things that uh, are still present with you because in reality you see you are holographic you are not um, you are not linear you know what I mean by linear yes yes yeah, of course right yeah so in reality our brain is linear the, the human part of us is linear it thinks you know this happens and this happens because of that because of this and you know everything is a sequential order but in mm-hmm. truth there is no time and everything is complete here now so when when this then when there is this understanding you begin to see that what we call the now is not made up of past and future although it is contained within it it is the now moment itself eternally because there's never a time when now is not but if you try to live in the now, you separate because you're saying, I want to live in the now. The moment you say, I want to live in the now, you find yourself incapable of doing it because okay. you put yourself in a separation which causes you to believe that you are living in time, which then again you begin to identify with the past and you bring it to the present and before you know what you've lost the now. So, so there has to be the understanding that there isn't me who wants to live in the now, but there's only now. There is no We me. are the now itself. We are the now itself. Now, when you okay. begin to feel that totally, then what happens is that you begin to live it more and more and more all the time. You live, you, because you are the now. You're not, I am not really Bert, you know. Um, <laughs> I am not my past and all this, even though it happened to this form, who I am really is this moment. So when I am in this moment, which means, of course, I know that I am this moment, then I forget about the past and future, I forget about birth, and I am in my love nature. You see? Because the now is love itself. You know, when you are totally being now itself, you forget about Tanya, and when you forget about Tanya, you are pure love. It's just like when a mother holds the baby in her arms, you know, just born, and she's seeing it for the first time, and she's so carried away, she forgets even about the pain of that birth, you see? She forgets everything at that moment, because she's so in love with the child, that at that moment, all she is is love. She is one with the moment, yeah. Okay, um, you refer to uh, 2.0 uh, consciousness, no? What do you mean? Oh, zero, zero point, yeah, zero point, yeah, zero point consciousness simply means that mm-hmm. you have come to a point where you are the now itself. And so, okay. and so your consciousness is not saying, oh, what about Bert? What does he feel? Do they like me? Do they don't like me? What am I supposed to say next? See, there's none of that. Okay. There's zero point. And zero point means zero point. I, I'm totally here. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, um, Bert, um, I, I want to, to ask you what kind of vibration um, are produced within us when we are pure love? What, um, what, what kind of vibration? Vibration? Yes, yes. Well, you see, we all carry an aura about us. There's a, there's a field, an auric field around us, you know. We are an okay. energy being. We are electromagnetic beings. So, so mm-hmm. whenever you, um, 
you experience this love, I mean, you know you are this love, you, you are totally in the moment, well, then naturally you are magnetic. In other words, people are drawn to you because they feel that you're accepting them, you're listening to them, and you can feel that you are, they are a part of you. So they can feel it, everybody can feel it, because inwardly, no matter how unaware we are, inside we all know that we want love, freedom, peace. We all know that these things are very important. As a matter of fact, if you ask anybody, are you depressed right now? And they'll say, yes, I'm depressed, I am angry. And then if you say to them, okay now, how would you prefer to be instead? And immediately mm -hmm. they say, well, you know, I might want to be happier or I want to be more at peace. Immediately they refer to the truth of themselves, you see? So whenever you say to yourself, what do I prefer? Immediately, there is that wisdom in you that says, yes, what I want is what I really am already. But of course, we might not know it at the time. But when you say what I prefer, you are going into that state that you already are. See, when a person is angry or depressed, it is because their ego is telling them you're not getting what you want and they okay. believe it and so they try to get rid of the depression they are angry for being angry they feel guilty and so they feel guilty for feeling guilty and it keeps on um, in a vicious circle but the point is not to get rid of anything the point is not to to um, to avoid anything to run away from anything but simply mm -hmm. to see what is it that I uh, prefer instead of this. And the moment you do that, there is forgiveness of the former depression, of the former anger, etc., etc., see? Okay. Um, um, it's something about acceptance, or um, it's something right about the, this acceptance? Acceptance is, uh, is a step Accept, I see acceptance is, is love is part of the acceptance. To accept mm -hmm. is to love, to love is to accept. Yeah, is that what you I, asked me? I, I'm not sure what you asked me. Um, I asked you how to live with love and acceptance. Or, uh, in fact, is something um, acceptance exists? Or I, is yeah, or I, the I, is? <laughs> I, I, acceptance, acceptance is love. We don't exactly. actually accept. Okay. We simply see there is no difference. You mm -hmm. see, when you say, well, that person is like this and I'm going to accept them. That's not real acceptance. Acceptance is when you see no difference. You see no separation. So, and that's what love is. Love does not try to accept or attempt to accept. It automatically accepts because that's the nature of love. So you see, yes. so we do not go into a role of trying to accept. You just simply accept automatically, just like a child playing with all kinds of nationalities. You see, okay. it does, he doesn't see black, white, gray, green, yellow. It, 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 the child is a child. It's full of love. It, it plays. It's innocent, you see. So that's what love is. Love sees no separation sees, what? has no prejudice, has no bias, and so it sees everything as itself. Okay. Um, I'm asking you that because, um, I don't know, in my, um, in my experience, um, I was in a certain point of my life that um, um, I, um, I accept and, uh, I don't know, I think that I'm accepting everything that happened in my life. And in that moment, I asked myself, who is, who is accepting? Who accepts what? <laughs> what is acceptance? And uh, in that moment, I, uh, I realized that uh, I was limiting, uh, limiting myself. Yes. Because yes. if I accept something, it means that I'm, I'm not that acceptance at yes, all. I know exactly what you're saying, right. Yes. Yeah. So, and, uh, 
Yeah, acceptance is an automatic process that comes from love, right? So you don't need to accept yourself. You simply, there is nothing else to do because your real nature is love itself. You see, so so if there are things that you don't want to accept about yourself, it is only because you think that they are real. They are the real you, but the real you is what you prefer. What makes you happy? What makes you feel good? That is the real you. Why? We have, uh, but Bert, we have different realities. Yeah, th th there are different realities because each individual, just like each wave of the ocean, has its own uh, unique expression and therefore it has its own unique viewpoint of life. And so everybody sees life differently. If you talk to a hundred people, um, how, you do, how do you see life, they'll all tell you something different according to their belief system. So each person creates their own uh, virtual, you know, reality, which is not really reality, it is their reality. But, okay. but when we begin to see that there is no separation at all and we be, go beyond the personal viewpoint, beyond the personal likes and dislikes, we begin to see that we all blend and, and go into that overall higher seeing, higher picture. And that's, that's true love. And, that's, uh, and in that moment, we cannot judge other people. That's right. We yeah. just have to love them and appreciate them and see the essence of us in them. <laughs> Very good. Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, that's what true love is. Love is when I can see you in myself. Mm -hmm. You see? And so, so yeah. yeah. As long as you see separate then you have your own beliefs, your own opinions, your own ideas, everybody has. But when you think that these are real, when you make something real, then it owns you, you see? Okay. Yeah, and when something owns you, it means that now you are attached and you're suffering. Okay. Oh, Bert, thank you. <laughs> I'm enjoying a lot this conversation and um, I don't know, I, um, I want to... Um, to, to think a, a lot of, um, I don't know, how to live a life without expectations. Uh, expectations will always be there because it's part of the mind, you know, and, and we, you know, so many people say to me and they write me, they say, well, how can I get rid of all these thoughts and how can I do this? How can I do that about the mind? Well, first of all, if you attempt to get rid of the thoughts, the thoughts will haunt you. The more you try to get rid of something, the, 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 the worse it gets, because what you resist persists. So, why try to get rid of anything? Just be who you know you are. You see, and it doesn't matter. Like some people say to me, Bert, do you ever have negative thoughts? Yes, I do. They do come, but the moment they come, immediately, uh, they're, they're forgiven, because I, I see, oh my God, you know. This game, the mind is playing. I don't try to get rid of it. I, I, okay. There's nothing to get rid of because I am. I am. And I am is love itself. But, but um, if we have a um, negative experience, I don't believe in uh, ne negative or positive uh, experience because I, I know that uh, it's all there is. It's just it. Beautiful. Oh, you couldn't have said a better word. Really, I'm so, I'm so happy that you mentioned it. Everything just is. The two words, the most powerful two words that there are, it's the absolute truth. You know what they are? God is. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm thinking that, um, I don't know, in some situation, uh, if we have a negative, yes, yeah. uh, um, experience, uh, we must um, live totally in in this uh, experience because we are. If you are, um, I don't know how to say it. Um, 
uh, I don't know. We want to um, to be more happier than now. We are. We right. want something yeah. better than now. Um, I don't know. We don't so accept this. You mean if, if you're caught in an emotion? Yes. Uh, if, you see, if you're caught in an emotion, depression, anger, frustration, it becomes so powerful that you can't, can't, can't do anything about it. Yes, you of see, course. There's nothing you can do about it once it's there. So what you can do then, you allow it, but allow it without judging it bad. Don't make it bad. You see, don't make it something that, oh, it shouldn't be there. Just say, okay, for a few moments right now, I have this feeling of depression. I take a couple of deep breaths and allow it. Allow oh, what is happening in my body and everything else. Just, just for a minute or two, give it some space, but don't judge it. And don't go into its story. Just, just, just let it be there. And the moment you do that, you begin to clean it out of your system. See, if you were to fight anything, you exacerbate it. In other words, you make it worse. You see, because okay. you're resisting it. And all negativity is based on resistance. Resistance means, I don't want this. You see? Yes, of course. Of yeah. course. So, but the moment, the moment you allow it, that very allowing makes it move inside you rather than locks itself inside you. And the moment you allow it to move, it's just like clouds in the sky. They might make the day look so dark because they're so dense and dark. But the moment they start to move, ah, the sun comes peering through. You see what I mean? So the moment yes, you allow an emotion to move, you see, then there is a chance of bringing in the sun, which is love again, which is beauty again. Like many people say, you know, my husband died or I lost a son. And they said, Bert, I can't help grieving. And I said, of course not. You know, because you're still a human being. So therefore, allow the grieving, but don't make it into, don't try to get rid of it, don't try to think of it as something bad. But it's a process that you need to go through. And so, maybe a moment or two in a day, just sit down and allow this grieving. Get to know it, become a friend to it, in other words. You know, just, just allow it, allow it. And then you'll find that after a while, you're free. You're free of the grieving. It just happens so fast, really does. Because, you see, we're all the time learning to love. And to love means to allow, to flow with, to align with. Not to resist, not to fight, not create war, you see. But to simply flow, flow with. So if there's something that just, you... Just go with the flow, just go with the flow. Yeah, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And but um, should we feel guilty for something that happened in our life? Well, guilt, you see, guilt is like crazy glue, you know. You know sometimes you have something that sticks to your fingers and you try to get rid of it and then it sticks with the other fingers, you know, and you can't mm -hmm. get rid of it. Well, that's what guilt is. Guilt is a very hard thing to get rid of. Guilt also has another very dangerous aspect to it. It makes you repeat the very thing you don't want. For example, um, you know, let's say you beat your child and then you feel guilty. The moment you feel guilty for beating the child, you begin to think, oh, I am bad and I shouldn't have done this, so oh, what's wrong with me? And then the child starts crying. Well, the moment you hear the child crying while well, you're thinking, what is wrong with me? Why did I do this? All of a sudden, shut up, you know. At that <laughs> very moment, you do the very thing, you see, that you don't need. So guilt um, creates the very thing you don't want, and it keeps repeating it and repeating it over and over again. So it contrast in our life. So no? What's that? Uh, guilt. Um, create contrast in our life. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, it creates the very thing we don't want. And it okay. makes us repeat it. You see, that is the thing about it. So the way to, to, uh, the way to deal with guilt is simply to forgive it. And forgiveness again, like I, I repeat before, is 
how do I prefer to be at this moment? Mm -hmm. And then you begin to see that how you prefer is the inner voice of love. You see? And, and then you see that that is who I really am. I am really not this guilt. The, now the guilt is part of the ego because the ego is guilt. And it wants to make you believe that you are this guilt. You see? But when you say, what do I really prefer to be instead of this guilt? And then for a moment, see that. And you see that this is the voice. What in your, in your, uh, in your heart? What is in that? That's heart. right. That, that inner voice is what is in your heart. And in your heart, you want to be happy. You want to be loving. You want to be flowing, harmonious, balanced. You see? In yes, alignment. But what if we have something to forgive? Uh, if you believe you have, then you have. Yes, you see? Now, most people feel that they have a lot to forgive. Because, mm -hmm. again, you know, we were brought up into thinking that I am just a body. And when you think you're just a body, you separate from other people automatically. So then you feel lonely, you feel separate, you feel deprived, you feel there's something wrong with you, you think you've done something wrong, you see? So you cannot help those feelings because you believe you are so limited. So therefore, the, uh, the, the way to deal What's with What's the word of forgiveness? Forgiveness comes from the word forgive, to give, forgive. To, okay. to give forward. So, uh -huh. in other words, you create a space. Remember I just told you a while ago, I said to allow a feeling to move? Well, it's the yes. same like the clouds. When you look at the sky, sometimes it's full of clouds and the day is dark because there is no sun coming through. But the sun is always there. So what you need to do is allow the clouds to move. Now, the clouds inside you are the clouds of depression, of anger, of guilt, of shame, of fear. So allow them to move. In other words, don't try to say, I shouldn't be like this. You know, mm -hmm. you know just, just say just allow me. Yeah, just allow. That, that's right, that's right, that's not who I am. So therefore, mm -hmm. allow it to move and just also ask yourself all the time, because it's very important, how do I prefer to be instead? And know okay. that that preference is the who you really are. And as you uh, allow, allow the guilt to, you know, the, don't fight it, don't make yourself wrong, but focus on how you prefer to be slowly. And it begins to change. And you create a space in which the light comes back again. Okay. In the beginning it is difficult. Because in the beginning you, you want to keep on feeling sorry for yourself. You want to play victim. You want to remain depressed and angry. And it says, why do you want to remain angry? Because, somebody will say, because that person did that to me. And uh, if I don't get angry at them, then it's as if I'm letting them get away with it. You see? But the person who's suffering is the one who is angry. Mm -hmm. So we do it to ourselves. So um, in the beginning, we don't want to forgive, you see? But, yes. but as we begin to learn more and more and begin to grow more and more and begin to find greater happiness and peace and love growing inside us, then everything will start to change. Yes. Um, but um, we, I don't know, how we can help others? Or um, um, we, we must to assume responsa responsibility of other people's life other people lives well we are not responsible for um, other people but let me let me make clear what responsibility means because many okay. people are not clear about responsibility they think of it as a burden they think of it as something heavy to carry around i have to be responsible for this or for that no you don't responsibility is listen to the word response ability the ability to, to, respond. to respond in the moment. The moment is all you have anyway. Like, I, I, I have an example of this. You know, I had a woman, she used to come to my satsang every week. She would never miss it for anything. And she always had the same babysitter. Well, one day she said, Bert, my child is sick. 
and I don't like to leave it with the babysitter, but I don't want to miss the satsang, I'm a little confused. And I said, what is your responsibility right now? And she said, that's right, my responsibility, ability to respond, because I had explained it to her once before. And she said, yeah, it is this moment the child is sick, therefore I stay with the child. You see, I said how simple it is, always deal with the moment as it is, respond as something is in the moment, that response ability, the ability to respond. Yeah. Okay. So it's not a burden, you know, responsibility, we are all responsible to live now. When we don't live now, then we become uh, a form of cheating and lying and, uh, you know, it can be helped. But when you live now, because you are the now, then you live pure. You know, I have a cat, I have a cat and, and he is so full of love, you know, and uh, he lives so completely in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> and um, we can help others just being ourselves. We can help others by being ourselves, yes. Definitely. As a matter of fact, when you are with a person who's depressed, you can almost feel depressed yourself. But if you are with someone who is full of love and loves you, when you're with them, you feel relaxed, you feel happier, you feel more yourself. Yes. Okay. And, um, um, Bert, I don't know, I, I have something else to, to ask you, but... Uh, just flow away, <laughs> but it's okay. Um, well, what I don't know ask, ask me anything. Ask me anything. Uh, yeah. Mm, <laughs> I think it's enough. I, I I don't know. It's just flow away. <laughs> okay. But uh, I don't know. I'm so grateful to um, I don't know to have this conversation with you. You are such a great man. You are such a great, um, I don't know how to say it. Um, I see myself in you. <laughs> Very good. And see no separation between us at all. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, it's, a great, uh, it's a great experience and sensation and uh, I don't know, um, vibration. It's, um, it's high. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. And then, but I don't know. I um, I want to um, um, to thank you again for accepting my invitation. Oh, you're most welcome. I looked forward to it too, because I liked your energy. Okay, <laughs> thanks a lot. <laughs> Um, but um, I don't know, I, um, you can uh, say something uh, to my community, to how to live a fulfilling life and how to be uh, their self. <laughs> yeah. Um... How, to, how to be our, um, I, I don't know, how to, how to enjoy uh, this life more, uh, more easily. Yes. Again, we go back to, um, you know, um, what we were saying all the time is being true to yourself. Always mm -hmm. be true to yourself. So, uh, and how can you be true to yourself? Always ask yourself this, no matter how you feel at the moment. You know, um, because feelings come from the past conditioning, the way you've been brought up, your nationality, your religion, all these affect you. But inside you are free, you are a free being. So whenever you're not feeling good, ask yourself this, and, and I repeat it because it's so simple and yet it's such a solution. How do I prefer to be? And okay. then you are listening to your own heart because how you prefer to be is exactly how you need to be. You see, you have to be very genuine, very sincere. How do I prefer to be now? And it always comes back to the same thing. I want to feel free, I want to feel happy, I want to be myself, I want to feel loved, and I want to love. And it always comes back to the same thing, you see. But when you keep saying it to yourself, how do I prefer to be, you're listening to the heart, you're listening to that which is real in you. 
you're listening to your real being at the moment. And the more you listen to the being that you are, the more you begin to live it. You see? Okay. And if you keep skipping, if you keep forgetting, that's okay. That's all right. Never judge yourself. Don't ever judge yourself. You see? Because self-compassion is, is, a, is a wonderful thing. Okay. Oh, but I'm full of love <laughs> right now. Um, you are a great child. I don't know. Um, as I said before, um, before we record this this interview, I I listen uh, a lot of uh, your video materials on YouTube, and um, I was such um, I don't know uh, deep deep, deep um, inside of myself. It was such a, a, great, a great sensation and uh, I want to, um, to transmit this, um, this vibration to, to my communities because it's such a beautiful... Beautiful, beautiful. And yes, and you'll be very good at it because I can feel your energy. You're, you're a very giving, open person. And uh, you'll be a great gift to a lot of people, yes. But always, one thing that I, I would suggest, always know that whatever you're doing, you're not really doing it. It's coming from your love. It's always coming from, from the, the spirit of love inside you. And let that spirit speak. And when you speak to people, tell them that they are just as beautiful as you are. You see, once, once they allow themselves to be the spirit of love itself. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will do that. <laughs> of course, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, let me know how you're making out. To write me an email, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll do. I'll do. Okay, Bert, thank you again. You're welcome. Um, I just simply love you. <laughs> love I, I love you. you too. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. You are. You are great, <laughs> as uh, as I'm great too. No. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Very much. Okay. okay, but thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye bye. Bye bye.